Today, I'm going to be talking about AR-47 Max. So, start at the beginning. I have a background in 545 by 39 which is the other action caliber, the one you shoot in an AK-74. But the one most people are familiar with is the AK-47, which shoots 762 by 39 Now, you obviously know since you clicked on this video, there are many ARs which are now built to run this caliber, and we call them AR-47s. So when I started to purchase mags for mine, I started off by doing research because in my 545 by 39 experience, I found many different makers and bought all the magazines and did the work myself and found that in that case, ASC were the best. But in this case, the conventional wisdom on the internet was you want the C products or CPD magazines. So I said, I'm gonna start there, no reason to reinvent the wheel. And that's what I did. I set about to find them. And I couldn't find them. I could find them on Gunbroker, but they were very hard to find online. And here's why. CPD, C Products, have rebranded to Duramag. This is their new brand. It's all the same thing. If you see CPD, a recommendation for CPD, or a recommendation for C Products, that's this, Duramag. You're not going to find those old brand names anymore. You're going to find this. This is what a 20-rounder looks like in package. All right, so I have here a 10 rounder, and a 20 rounder, and a 28 rounder. I'm just gonna line those up so you can kind of see it. And I'll roll in some, some uh, footage of what they look like kind of laid out. But um, I'm gonna walk you through what I think of these magazines and what I think they're good for. So let's start with a 10 rounder. I believe there's a five rounder as well. But this would be good for something like deer hunting. I'm going to use my rifle, which has a one and a half by seven scope on it, for deer hunting. Uh, it's a handy little rifle, and there's no reason to have more than really two or three shots, much less ten. But I just use ten because it fits well in the magwell. Because the AR-15 system has, I don't remember the term for it, but something that essentially means it captures the whole top of the magazine, as opposed to a rock-in style like in an AK-47 you see that there's almost no difference there. So if you had a five round magazine, this thing's barely sticking out. But if you had a five round magazine, it would be maybe that long with some filler space in between. So it seems no reason, unless you have a five round magazine restriction in your home state for hunting, to get a five rounder, I just got a 10 because it serves dual purposes. Um, so I like a 10 rounder for a lot of reasons. One, it's just so dang handy. So again, let's start looking at this as it is with a bipod. Um, this is a Harris bipod with a LaRue mount. I'm going to do a re review on that at some point. But um, easily shoots from a prone position. If I were to collapse these down, or excuse me, shoots great from the um, bench like that. But this would go prone as well. Yeah? So you could easily get down with that, right? The 10 rounder <clears throat> obviously is going to be good for that. I'm moving up there. From there is the 20 rounder. Now this is my actual preferred magazine and I'll tell you why. I also shoot 20 rounders in the AK-47 and it's because I find it much more handy in practical use. So these are banana mags, right? You see the 10 is obviously still straight, like an AR-15 10 rounder, but now we're getting into the banana shape, which the AK-47 is very well known for. They call them banana mags. So you see a little bit of that on the 20. The 20 still feeds reliably, but it's much less cumbersome. And it's the same length, roughly, when inserted as a traditional AR-15 mag. But look how much longer, look how much longer the 28 is. Okay? So that's way, way below um, my grip. So you want to think about it in terms of how far, like when you're thinking about going prone, how far off, what, what's going to be like the thing that holds me up? And in, and in most cases with a gun like this, it's, it's the magwell or the magazine in the magwell. So even with a 20, if we collapse the bipod, <clears throat> it's doable. You're still gonna get a slight amount of that monopod feeling if you were prone. Um, and you might use that to your advantage, not so bad. But once you get to a 28, the position of that monopod is a little weird and you're actually starting to put a lot of pressure on that magazine that is coming from a weird angle because it curves. So look at the difference in the curves here. You see how much further out the 28 rounder is than the 20? So I don't recommend either one of those for a situation where you might need to go prone. For home defense, sure, get the 28. They also make a 30. Um, I didn't even mess with that because I know from AKs how long 
that is. So I got this just to have it and for comparison. Uh, this is the only one I had any possible reliability issues, but I was doing gas system testing at the time, so I give it a pass. So far they've all been very reliable for me through about um, a little over 100 rounds. I'll do a much higher round count review in a year or so when I naturally get to that point. I'm not, you know, given carbon circumstances, I'm not just blasting ammo just to see if it functions, but as I go through them. Now there is one thing I want to point out. These Duramag magazines, they're made in the USA and that's great. And they're made of steel, which is different than AR-15 mags. Uh, and there's a positive and negative to that. Steel's real hard and it should last forever. The guys at Battlefield Vegas, the super high volume, full auto rental range, like the metal GI mags because they say they last longer than PMAX. Now you and I aren't shooting hundreds of thousands of rounds, so maybe it doesn't matter. But in any case, these are metal mags, which is a positive. However, one of these, the 20 rounder, this is probably its maybe fourth, third or fourth range section. Now I'm gonna see if I can focus in on this. There's, there's a spot of rust on it. Can you see that? Yeah, right on the edge there. A spot of rust. So that's only on the base plate and I don't see any of it on the mag body itself. Maybe that's a base plate issue. That's not a functional area, right? The outside of the, of the base plate, but it makes you wonder what's going on inside and makes you think twice about what, would it, what will it last you know, 20 years or in a, in a marine environment or something like that. However, if you're shooting AR-47, this is the mag to get. Even given those concerns, I would just replace them if 20 years from now they rusted. So I recommend them. I've had no reliability issues. They rock in and out nice. They shoot easy. Um, no reliability issues with them. And they, they lock back the bolt. Um, so they're great. Again, I recommend you stick to 20s and 10s. But, you know, you're going to want to buy those 30s for if you're doing home defense or if you're some kind of uh, very rare contractor who gets to shoot <laughs> AR-47s maybe somewhere. Go for the 30s, right? But for uh, definitely for hunting and for typical use, I think a 10. I think a 10. Now, if you're hunting hogs, that's what I have the 20 for, right? Because I may go prone with this, but I'll be on the bipod, right? So you see how with the bipod, legs extended, no problem with the 20. No problem at all. Or legs not extended. Even legs not extended. So that's why I like the 20. I'm going to use it for hog hunting. For everything else, I'll use a 10 rounder. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Thank you very much.